You want to make a forge server in Minecraft and this guide is going to show you everything you need to know to get your forge server set up and hopefully this guide works for a long time, years and years into the future, allowing you to get mods and forge on your server running perfectly. Now, one thing I will mention about the server we're starting in this video is that it's not a 24-hour server. It's only going to be up and running when your computer is up and running. It's also running on your own computer, meaning you're going to need a really good computer in order to run a modded server and run modded Minecraft because all the mods have to be installed on the server and in your local game in order to work, meaning you need a lot of RAM and a decent CPU in order for this to work. The server is also not DDoS protected and it's hosted on your public IP address, meaning anyone who gets the IP can do DDoS you and find out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates, meaning this server is just for your friends, your family, people you trust. But luckily there is a solution, and that solution is our company and the sponsor of this video, Simple Game Hosting. Go to the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple to start a server with Forge in just literally one click during checkout. From there, you can easily add mods, you can easily customize the server however you want, anything you can do on a local server hosted on your own computer, you can do on a simple game hosting server, and there's even more benefits. The server can be up 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, it's fully DDoS protected, and we use high quality hardware, meaning that you can run mods in your server without issue, and you don't have to worry about the hardware, we take care of all of it. That's on top of the fact we have live chat support if you have any issues, we're there to help you out, and if you want mod packs, we have a one click mod pack installer for hundreds of mod packs. That you to easily install those without having to add in hundreds and hundreds of mods to your server. It takes care of everything. Literally, you just select the mod pack, load the mod pack up on your computer, and join it just like you would any other Minecraft server. So this video is nearly 20 minutes long, and at Simple Game Hosting, you can be playing on your server within five minutes. So instead of wasting a ton of time starting this server with port forwarding and everything else, Go on to Simple Game Hosting where you don't have to port forward, you don't have to worry about the hardware, and you can set your server up the simple way at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple, and again, start your server in five minutes. Nevertheless, what if you do want to start your server on your own computer? Well, that's where this comes in. This is the second link in the description down below, and that will take you here. I plan on doing an in-depth guide on adding Forge and getting a Forge server, but that's not set up yet. So right now, this just takes you to our local Forge installation guide. In the future, though, the process of downloading Forge won't change. You'll just come down and click the Download Forge button here. That will then take you to Forge's official website, where what you want to do is on the left-hand side, select the version of Forge that you want. We're going to go with the most recent version, but like I said, this will work for pretty much any version, at least back to 1.12, but I believe even back to like 1.8, if not earlier. So this will work for pretty much every major mod version out there, be it 1.8, 1.12, or the most recent version whenever you're watching this video. So once you're here, go ahead and go under Download Recommended and click on Installer. That may take you off to Add Focus, where stop, don't click anything on this page whatsoever. Do not click anything. Just wait about 10 seconds, and after about 10 seconds, a Skip button will appear in the top right. Go ahead and click that Skip button. It's the only thing you want to click on this page. Do not click anything else, and then a file will start downloading. As you can see, Forge is the file here and it will start downloading. As long as Forge is in the title, like it is for us, you're good to keep that file, save that file, download that file. If Forge isn't in the title, then stop the download and delete it because you didn't just click the skip button. We want to just click the skip button in the top right on this page. That is it. Nevertheless, from there we go ahead and minimize our browser and we want to move to our desktop the Forge file we downloaded. Where is it at? Well, it's going to be in our downloads folder. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up and move it to our desktop. Now there's two things we need to do here. One, we need to create a folder on our desktop. So right click, create a new folder. You can name server you want. I'm going to name it Forge Server because we're making a Forge server. But again, you can name it literally anything. And then what we want to do from there is we want to go ahead and open up this Forge file. Now, in order to do this, you will use Java. To open this with Java, right click on it, click on Open With, click Java, and click OK. But I don't have Java here. Well, if you don't have Java, you need to go to the description down below and go here. This is how to download and install Java 17 for Minecraft mods and servers. This is a modded server, so you definitely need Java. You also may need to run the jar fix, and what this is going to do is take all the jar files on your computer and link them back to Java, making them work happily together, but you definitely need to get Java 17 if you can't open with Java. And I say Java 17, but in the future, this may change. So future versions of Minecraft may require Java 20 or Java 30 in the future. Right now, it's Java 17. This will always be on the most recent version. For Minecraft 1.17 and higher, 
it is Java 17. For Minecraft 1.16 and lower, it's Java 8. And in the future, if it does change, this will be up to date here for the most recent version of Minecraft. Now let's go ahead and minimize our browser and we can open up Java by right clicking, open with, Java, and then click OK. Now there's two things you want to do in here. One, click install client and click OK. That's going to install Forge locally. Everyone who plays on your server has to have Forge installed locally and all the mods installed locally as well as you having added the mods to the server. It's unfortunate, I hate it, but it's part of modding Minecraft. You've got to have the mods both on the server and locally. So then go ahead and click OK here. And then we want to repeat that, opening up Forge again. This time we're going to go ahead and install the server. So open with Java. And then we want to click on Install Server. A red box is going to appear here. Click the three dots. And then you want to go ahead and click Desktop and find the folder we created. In our case, it's Forge Server right here. And then click Open. The red box will disappear and click OK. And now Forge is going to install all the server files into this Forge server folder in the background here. So we just want to sit, relax for a second, let this install. And once it's finished, just click OK to close out of it. And if we open up this Forge server folder here, we have some files and folders here. Now mine is called run.bat, but if you don't have, by clicking view and clicking file name extension at the top, yours just may be called run here, but it's going to be the Windows batch file type. But I like turning on file name extensions, again, by clicking view at the top and clicking that checkbox. But double click on that run file, that's the Windows batch file, and that's going to start your server. It's going to attempt to start at least, but it will fail. As you can see, press any key to continue. But a few files Files were generated. Specifically, this eula.txt file is the one that we're looking for. So go ahead and open that up. And assuming you agree to the Minecraft ULA, which we do, change eula equals false to eula equals true. T-R-U-E exactly like that. And then click File, Save. And there we go. The eula is now saved. And we can double click that run.bat file to start the server. Now this forge file that we have on our desktop, the installer, we can delete that because now we've got it installed on our computer. We've got the server installed. We don't need anything else. And as you can see, the server is starting here. I'm going to go ahead and open up Minecraft. At this point, you can join your server. You're the only person that can join it. Your friends can't join it at this point. We're going to need a port forward in order to allow that. And we will do that in this video. But first, let's just make sure you can join it and that everything is working as it should. Now, like I said here, you want to make sure that you're playing with your Forge installation. And we do have it here. It is the correct version. All of that stuff. So we can go ahead and click play and open that up. Anyone who joins your server needs Forge and all the mods that are on the server installed locally. I know I mentioned it like a million times, but it is the most common issue people have with modded servers once they get them set up. So I'm going to go ahead and let Minecraft open here, and then I'll meet you to show you how you can join your server just to test things out, and then we'll port forward to allow your friends to join your server. So here we are. Minecraft is open. If we go to multiplayer, if you get this warning, you probably don't, but go ahead and click proceed. You're good to do that. And then once you click proceed, we can go ahead and click add server here. Now, once we're here, you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name it local connection because, well, this is the local connection. It's the only person who can join it. It's you. It's on your local computer. And then for the server address, it's just going to be local host for the IP. Literally the word local host, all together, all one word, and click done. So there we go. We have it. It's already found there. We're good to go. And from there, we can go ahead and double click on it to join. You'll see us join in on the left-hand side, and boom, we're in game. It's working. But again, you're the only person that can join this way. It's just good to join here. Make sure it works. Make sure it's good to go. The server is set up for you to join. And now we need to port forward and allow your friends to join. And by the way, you don't have to port forward at all at Simple Game Hosting. And again, that's the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple. You don't have to do this at all. Literally, you get the IP and your friends can join it. No port forwarding. But nevertheless, how do we port forward? Well, first, we want to go ahead and close out of Minecraft. And then we want to stop the server over here. Literally, just type stop right like so and then hit enter. You always want to stop your server that way because it shuts it down properly, as you can see, saving all the chunks and everything there, which is important, and then press any key to continue. From there, what we can do is go ahead and close out of this folder, and we want to open up the start menu. In the start menu, we want to type CMD to open up the command prompt, and then in the command prompt here, what we want to do is go ahead and type IPCON. FIG, IP config exactly like that, and hit enter. That's then going to give us some information here. We specifically are looking for our IPv4 address and default gateway. I'm going to open up Notepad, and we're going to make a note of these in Notepad here. So our IPv4, in my case, is on this line here, and it's 192.168.1.1. .1 Yours may be completely different, and that is perfectly okay. That's why we're getting it this way instead of me just telling you what number to enter in here because it's probably different than mine. For our default gateway, it is on this line down here. Mine is 192.168.1.1. Now, for you, if next to default gateway, you've got a big long string of numbers and letters, you don't want that one. 
under that, there'll be one that's just numbers. It'll probably be very similar to mine here. That's the one that you want. So go ahead and type that one in for your default gateway. It's again, probably going to be on the second line under default gateway. If the first line is a big long string with numbers and letters. So now that we've got both of these, we can go ahead and close out of command prompt. And what we want to do is open up our browser. And then in our browser, we want to open up a brand new tab. And then in that new tab up here at the top, we want to type in our default gateway, which for me was 192.168.1.1. Now, a login box of some sort is going to open up when you hit enter there. For me, it just popped in from the top. For you, it might be in the center of your screen. It might be a pop-up. It could be anything, but some sort of a login box is going to open. What do you enter in here? Well, it's going to be different than your Wi-Fi password, and we have a link in the description on how to find your router's password. It's kind of cool because it gives you different methods. Method 1 all the way through Method 5. Generally, people find it by Method 3, if not 4, and occasionally you do have to contact your ISP. Usually, though, it is by method three people find it, and then by method four, it's definitely found because this is just resetting your router so you can use method three. Then, once you've found that information, go ahead and log into your router. I'm going to do that, and I will see you once we've logged in. Once you've logged into your router, it'll probably look completely different from mine, and that's okay because of two things. One, I'm going to go through this entire video showing you different terms, giving you different terms of what port forwarding might be in your router. Two, we have this, which is an in-depth guide on all the most popular routers and how to port forward on them. Even if your specific router is not in that video, it's worth giving it a watch because a lot of the router software is very similar. You'll pick up on terms, you'll pick up on potential locations, and then what you do get in your router, you'll be like, this is very similar to an AT&T router or a Netgear router or an Asus router, for example. So go through this guide if you do have any questions about port forwarding, or you can just click around and just click around your router until you find port forwarding. Now for me, it's going to be an advanced and then advanced again, and then port forwarding slash port triggering. For you, it could be in a security tab, it could be in a firewall tab, a networking tab, an apps and gaming tab, a NAT gaming tab, an NAT gaming, a NAT forwarding tab, NAT forwarding. It could be an admin or advanced or administration. Again, it could be in security, I see that a lot. It could be in just port forwarding slash port triggering. It could be in single port forwarding, or it could be in a app forwarding, APP, right? Like apps and gaming, but just app forwarding or game forwarding. Tons of potential locations, but overall, you're looking for port forwarding. Just click around your router until you find it. And it is perfectly okay to just click around your router. A lot of people get scared by it, but as long as you don't save anything but the port forward, you're good. Nothing's going to break. And if you do, every router has a default factory reset that you can reset things back to, and it will work from there. So no worries. Feel free to click around your router. And once you do find port forwarding, you want to either add a custom service, add a new port forward, or click a plus button to add a port forward, or you'll have a big list of empty boxes. And if that's the case, just use the first one. For me, I have to add a custom service. From there, what you want to do is go ahead and enter in for the service name or ID, Minecraft Forge Server, because that's what this is for. But you could really enter in anything here. You just want to make sure that you can identify or know what the name of this port forward is and what it's being used for. For the protocol, you want to select TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both. You want to make sure both of these are selected. And if for whatever reason you can't select both, you want to do this twice. Once for TCP and once for UDP, leaving everything else the same. But for us, we can select both of them here right like so. For external ports and actually anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T, anything involving the word port, you're going to enter in 25565, right like so. So we have external ports, 25565, internal port, there it is, 25565. Anything involving the word port, 25565 is what you'll enter in. For your internal or local IP address, this is going to be the IPv4 address we found earlier. So in my case, 192.168.1.1. Five, right like so. Now, you may have a big list, a big drop-down box of every device on your network. I actually have that too here, and we can find my PC, and it's going to be, right here it is, 192.168.1.25, right? So it's the same as the IPv4 address we found earlier. If you have that drop-down box, just select the device you're making your Minecraft server on. Now, in some cases, you'll need an outside or public IP address, and guess what? Everyone who's watching this video needs that as well, because that's how your friends are going to join your server. They're going to use your public IP. So in the description down below, you can find the link to here. This is our website where you will find a link to your public IP address. 
Once you're here, you can just copy it, but you can see what you can get from a public IP. Your region, your city, your latitude and longitude coordinates, not to mention people can DDoS you, hit your internet offline with it. So it's important that you only give this out to your friends, your family, people you trust. If you want more security, that's where Simple Game Hosting does come in. So go ahead and check that out. Again, link in the description down below if you are worried about that. But go ahead and copy this here. If you did need this on your port forward, go back and paste it in. Otherwise, you want to make sure you apply or save your port forward. If you don't do that, you don't save the port forward, it's not going to work. So you want to make sure you save it, you confirm it, anything you got to do to make sure it's saved, as you can see ours did here, and then we can go ahead and join the server. The first part of that is going to be starting the server. So go ahead and double click that run.bat file. The second part of that is opening up Minecraft with Forge. I've said it a million times, I'll probably say it a few more in this video, and this is one of them. Forge must be installed locally and on the server, and every mod on the server must be installed on the server and locally in order to join the server. So we're going to go ahead and open up Minecraft with Forge here, and once we're on the main menu, we'll join this server with the public IP. So here we are, Minecraft is open, the Forge server is open on the left, and we go into multiplayer. We can go ahead and add another server. This time we're going to name it our public IP, just so we can differentiate these. You can name it whatever you want, and then this time we're going to paste in the public IP. Now earlier, I didn't mention it, but you can see 4.3 of my public IP. This is the last two digits, and that is the same here. You can see 43, just so you know we're using the same IP in both places. And then go ahead and click done. Boom, we have this new public IP, and we can double click to join it. Now, my IP. Now, my uh, internet service provider is fine with me doing this, connecting to myself via my public IP, but a lot of them aren't. So if you can't join via the public IP, that's perfectly fine. Your friends are all that have to join via the public IP, and you can join via that local host connection that we did earlier in the video. So you can join via local host, and your friends can join via the public IP, if for whatever reason you cannot use your public IP. Now, on top of that, it is worth mentioning that if your friends do have trouble joining via the public IP, that in the description down below, we do have a complete guide on how to allow your friends to join and how to allow Java through Windows Defender Firewall. This is the most common issue you have with your friends not being able to join your server after port forwarding. Make sure the port forward is correct, but then make sure you allow Java through your Windows Defender Firewall. This is usually the issue if it is having issues. We also have this, which is how to fix a broken Minecraft server. It goes over everything you need to know to fix different issues with modded servers and non-modded servers. covers everything, and it's super in-depth, so go check this out if you do have any issues. And then we have this, which is how to add mods to your Minecraft server. It covers everything. And generally, you just add them to the mods folder on the server and locally. So if we go ahead and we were to open up our Forge server here, we would see that there is a mods folder here. So you would add the mods here, and you would also install the mods locally. But this video that's linked in the description goes more in depth. It covers Fabric versus Forge, making sure you're getting Forge mods, making sure you're getting the correct version, downloading them from CurseForge, from Modrinth, all of that stuff. It's all covered in depth there, making sure they're installed locally, installed on the server, and then again, your friends will also have to download the mods and install those locally as well. So this covers everything. That's why I wanted to link it to a dedicated video on it. Rather than just, you know, quickly showing you in this video, I wanted to have a dedicated source as well. So add the mods here. Add the mods to your local mods folder in Minecraft. So if we go back to Minecraft here and we go over to our mod section on the main menu. Open mods folder. Add them here as well. And then once you've done that, you'll be able to join the servers with mods. But there is some more nuance occasionally. And that's where this video in the background does come. In. So if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Enjoy your Forge server, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.